Okay, so today we are taking a look at chapter one again. We're starting to recap. We are going to go through some past paper problems concerning the work in chapter one. Let's get right into it. So this drawing shows us a ground squirrel. The question asks us which feature identifies this animal as a mammal. Well, what features can we see? Well, we can see the squirrel has eyes, ears, we can see it's got fur. Now we just have to pair what we can see with what we know the characteristics of mammals are. And one of the characteristics of mammal is their vertebrates that have fur. And that's on the list, so that would be our answer. Here we have a diagram which shows us how the seed changes after it's planted in soil and then watered. What characteristics of living things are demonstrated in this sequence of events? Well, we can see that growth will definitely be one of the um, characteristics. Thus, we can take a look at the two that have growth in them. And then we can rule out excretion because the bean is not excreting anything or at least not anything that we can see at this stage but it is displaying sensitivity because the stalk is growing upwards and the roots growing down so the it's uh, showing sensitivity to an obvious light source the diagram shows part of the classification of the animal kingdom with an example of each group so all animals are divided uh, into animals without backbones and animals with backbones. The question asks us which pair of animals have the most recent common ancestor as suggested by the classification. So let's take a look at our options. Our options here is a centipede and a carp. Uh, we can find the centipede here under myropods and carp we can find here um, under fish. They're not that closely related because they literally in two uh, under two different um, classification schemes. Then we've got a flea and a frog. So here we've got flea under insect, and here we've got frog and amphibians. Then we've got lizard and parrot. The lizard is under reptiles there, and then we've got parrot, which is under birds. They're quite closely related because they've got a common um, in the same uh, classification class if you will and they've got a very common ancestor because they are very you can see here according to this they're very closely related lastly we've got the spider and the rat and they once again are quite they're not they're quite distant relatives to each other thus i would say the most the animals which have the most recent common ancestor as suggested by this classification would be the lizard and a parrot bacteria are classified as belonging to the prokaryote kingdom state two features of all prokaryotes and here you can see why it's extremely important that you know the characteristic features of all the different classes um, of living things so the features of or the characteristics of all prokaryotes are they're often unicellular they have no nucleus they have cell walls which aren't made of cellulose and they have no mitochondria so you can choose any of those to get your two marks for that now we asked breathing out combines which two characteristics of living organisms well breathing out first of all is excretion because you are breathing out carbon dioxide from your body now what other characteristics does breathing out entail it involves movement so you might think that because the question involves breathing that they're asking us um, about respiration but uh, don't be confused here they're asking you about the uh, two characteristics of breathing out whereas respiration is the process that involves breathing in um, taking in oxygen using that oxygen for the production of energy and then exhaling carbon dioxide so respiration entails a whole process and here they're simply asking us uh, about two characteristics that all living organisms show so scientists discover a new species of animal it has a segmented body with two pairs of legs on each segment to which group of animals does this new species belong well, this is another classic example of why you have to know the characteristics 
of all the different um, classes. So an animal with two pairs of legs and as on each segment. The clue here is segment. If you remember, myropods have segmented bodies with a pair of legs on each segment. So the answer would be D. So this diagram shows an insect over here. Use this diagram to identify the insect. This is a pretty straightforward question, but I'll quickly run it through with you. So number one, wings are present or wings are absent? Well, that's quite obvious. We can see that there's wings present, so go to two. Are there two pairs of wings or one pair of wings? So initially I thought that there was only one pair of wings, but if you look very carefully, you can actually see that there's one, there's one wing and there's another wing, making it two pairs of wings. Thus, we will proceed to three. So, wings with circular markings or wings without circular markings. The markings, although they seem circular, are not circular as you have to look quite carefully. They're more oval and irregular shape. So our answer here would be D. This is an example of how to follow a key. You have to pay close attention to very small details that might um, not seem very obvious at first. But look carefully and follow the steps. Question 4. Which feature shows that a cell is a plant cell? Another classic example of why you have to study, highlight, know the characteristics of all the different classes, kingdoms, etc. So let's take a look here. Which the features concerning a plant cell? It does the plant cells have a cell membrane? Yes. Does plant cells have cell walls? Yes. Does plant cells have cytoplasm? Yes. And nucleus, that's also a yes. But a cell membrane, cytoplasm and a nucleus is also found in animal cells. So a cell wall is a feature which we can pretty assuredly say would uh, show that this cell is a plant cell and not another type of cell. Remember, a cell wall is a feature that helps a plant cell become turgid. Figure 1.1 shows five different uh, vertebrates. State one feature that is shared by all vertebrates. So they're asking us a feature that is universal to all vertebrates, not just birds. Well, all vertebrates have a spine or a backbone. That is the one feature that is shared by all vertebrates. The five animals in figure 1.1 all belong to the same group of vertebrates. State the name of this group of vertebrates. That is probably the easiest question ever. They are all birds, thus making them all part of the class birds. Next we get asked to state two features which place the five vertebrates in this group. This is why you should know your characteristics of all your different classes. So the characteristics of birds are they're all vertebrates with feathers which we can see. They all have four limbs that have become wings as we can see here. 